Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ankur Fukan. I'm a father of two kids, uh, married to the love of my life and I am here to tell you some insights about digital marketing. Um, today, we would like to discuss about a topic and it's called Leads Funnel Strategy. So what is the Leads Funnel Strategy looks like and what it is all about? As we know, most of the business owners, we um, try to get some leads, whether we get those leads uh, through digital marketing, through Facebook, through Google, running some ad campaigns, or we outsource some leads, you know, uh, through other offline marketing activities. But do you know that those leads, are they actually ready to buy your product? Are they ready to make a sale for your particular product? The answer is no. Most of the business owners, you know, they either blame uh, our digital marketing agency or they either blame the person who is actually generating those leads, letting them know that we are not getting any kind of response. We are not getting any kind of uh, sales from those particular leads. It is completely wastage of money. So uh, I'm here to tell you like what went wrong? What was the main reason why this leads actually did not convert? Because uh, as per the human psychology, as per the buying ecosystem, all the leads follow in a funnel. As you can see, I have drawn a funnel, right? In this funnel, there are four stages. There are four stages, four. The first stage is known as M-A-L. What does M-A-L stands for? Second step, it stands for marketing available leads. Second is MQL, SAL, SQL, and then we have closed one close lost okay so these are the four stages of a particular lead that it has to go through so that they can make the buying decision of your product and your services so whenever you are generating the lead that means whenever we are getting the first point of contact that is actually known as MAL, which stands for Marketing Available Leads. Remember my friend, Marketing Available Leads comes in bulk quantities and they are not ready to buy your product. They just know, they just saw your ad somewhere in Facebook or maybe in Google Ads, you know, or you have run some retargeting campaigns or they have just seen your banner, they have seen your website. You know, somehow they have just uh, landed up in your site, in your landing pages, and they have filled up their information. And you get their information like the first name, last name, email address, and phone number. So if you are trying to pitch to sell your products to directly to just the marketing available leads, I'm telling you it's gonna be total disaster. So what is important is to follow a protocol to follow a procedure through which your leads can understand the product and services that you're offering at the same time they can make some decisions to either to go ahead with your product on an immediate stage or maybe on a later stage but how can we identify the baseline is we cannot sell all our products and services to everyone we as business owners need to identify which are the groups or segment of people who has the decision making power plus at the same time they are the right people for our business to purchase our products or services so the first time is mal so whenever we are outsourcing those leads we are getting the marketing available leads we need to qualify those leads how do we qualify by running some certain type of campaign which will be teaching you okay so once let's say in mal we have around 10k data 
okay so we just uh, got 10k data um, you know from other from every sources now we have to qualify we have to make sure that those leads are marketing qualified there can be spam some phone numbers are not working you know some people are not interested maybe they don't fall into the segmentation or the dimension or the demographics through which we are trying to sell so after qualifying after finding out let's say we are left with only 7k data so once we have marketing availability 7k data we will be transferring that entire information to our sales team because they are the one who are the right people to make a decision whether these people which is uh, been forwarded to us from marketing team are actually going to buy our products or services yes or no after sales gets those leads you know after making all the filtration so let's say after sales available leads we have uh, 5k data because of course marketing will be like doing some homework and they will be randomly checking everything and then forwarding to the sales team once sales team qualifies let's say we are left with just 2k so you can see straight away from 10k sales have just qualified 2k remember my thing uh, remember my uh, friend if a person is just a manager of a particular company or he is a senior manager let's say and he does not have any kind of right to make a decision to purchase the product there is no point in pitching for that product to the particular person we can either educate them we can either ask them for more information about the person who is having the power let's say he has to be like depending on the say products or services he has to uh, have the purchasing authority or uh, whether he can be the VP of the company whether he can be director of the company or maybe the sales head or marketing head of that particular organization through which uh, you know our services will be sold so after that once sales identifies and we have only 2k data will be running some kind of retargeting and there are a lot of campaigns through which will be like identifying those leads and after that let's say out of 2k data only 100 people purchase or maybe 50 purchase we're talking about a realistic figure here you can see that there is a 10k data out of which let's say i'll not take 100 as a number let's say 50 as a number and 50 people actually uh, thought of buying your products and services what about the rest 1950 leads what about them they should go into the funnel named as close lost and people who have already showed interest and they have actually purchased our product it's just 50 so keeping in mind that we have got 10,000 leads and stating that we'll be getting sale for throughout the 10,000 leads that is an impossible figure we have to identify which are the qualified leads out of which we'll be marketing them and qualifying them out of which only 50 people actually bought our product rest what to do with the 1950 leads most of the companies most of the organization they do not have a chart like this and what they do is they send this 1950 leads into thrash now remember one thing this 1950 leads that actually came through a lot of filtration in the process so either they might be purchasing your product on a later stage maybe in a month two months six months down the line or they will not be buying your product immediately or maybe they are interested in purchasing your product maybe some other products you know not the one which you're trying to sell if you have multiple products in your organization right so we'll be like retargeting them you know will be like retargeting these leads because these are the gold mines now what about the leads that is been filtered across the funnel well if we are trying to convert leads you know and the first thing that we need to do is we need to follow a process which is known as EECR 
we need to follow a process which is known as PECR. Now, most of the people will be questioning what is EECR stands for? What is EECR stands for? E stands for education. Next is engagement. Next is competition. Last is retention. Okay, so every lead which has not been converted, it is very important that uh, while segmenting the data, we need to first step, we need to educate about the company. We need to educate them about our products and services, the company's policies, what type of business that we deal and how uh, as a company, as an organization, we can actually help our customers in order to, uh, you know, uh, in order to uh, solve their problem. So education is number one priority. Second is engagement. How are we actually engaging those leads? Now uh, talking about engagement, uh, there are several types of engagement activities that happens uh, with the lead. We need to constantly keep on sharing them with some uh, newsletters, with some updates, with some blog materials. We also need to send them some information about our products and services, the press releases, the information, you know, the new updates. So all this engagement that we need to offer them. At the same time, we also need to identify what are the biggest problems that the industry is facing right now and how can we as a company, we come into picture and help them solve the problem, right? And third is competition. Well, it is very important that you need to educate your customers about the competition, like what other, other competitors are doing, you know, in which industry they are like following, what are the trends that has been following, you know, and how good or better we are in terms of our competition. So this information that we need to share after the client comes on board, after the client purchases your product, the most of the uh, business owners uh, they tend to say that okay this is an existing customer we will not pay much attention to it but that's completely wrong we need to make sure that we keep them engaged as well at the same time we need to focus on retention because my friend it takes almost seventy percent low cost to acquire uh, to retain your old customers how much 70 percent because if a, a, you have an existing customer it is very easy you just have to pick up a phone or send him an email or you know keep on uh, in sending some information to him um, you're not spending anything in marketing right you're not spending anything in google ads you're not spending anything in any other campaigns you're not spending any banners and hoardings and all because they already purchased your product they already know what are the pros and cons about the product try to identify them you know try to uh, make sure that they stay with your company because these are the people who have actually purchased your product and if they are going to retain and if they are going to uh, you know take your product and services year after year then they become revenue for your business however if we go ahead and uh, do remarketing for uh, new customers and if we go ahead and target new sections new data it costs us way a lot higher so this is the funnel strategy uh, like how majorly uh, the big fortune 500 companies are following and they have been uh, generating millions of dollars in their business and uh, you know they have been generating a lot of revenue and making their company grow year after year now uh, the question here is how are we going to create this because so far everybody has understood like yes we have the data we need to identify we need to uh, retarget right we need to sell to sales team they will be making the sales but how can you identify because this will be an ongoing continuous process 
the person who is responsible for generating new leads you'll be generating new leads every day every month every week every quarter you know whatever you what is the frequency you are using for your organization to uh, continuously generate those leads now if we stop generating those leads in the first step right in the first step of the funnel if we stop generating those leads then there will be no leads altogether right the 10k leads you have to make sure that your team continuously generates 10k leads a month or 10k leads a quarter whatever is your company's goals so that process has to be still there at the same time the 1950 people who are who could be the potential customer maybe not today maybe some other time in near future so we need to make sure that this actually goes into the funnel back and we tar retarget them with those people who are actually because this month we got 1950 next month we'll be getting another 1950 next month we'll be getting another 1950 right so we'll be getting so many leads which will be falling at the bottom of the funnel right and at the same time we need to filter and identify like which are the leads that will be purchasing our product and our services now how do we do it how do we actually uh, framework this entire thing um, so the first thing that we need to do is you need to have a certain kind of system or a software through which uh, you know you can identify which are the uh, potential leads which are the potential customers what was the date when your last sales agent actually had a conversation and what was the conversation all about did he or she did the uh, potential customer showed any kind of interest or uh, purchasing your product or what was the conversation because if you're starting a conversation let's say hey uh, you know what you received a call last month and I can see that you have promised us that you'll be uh, trying our product and service or you'll be coming for a demo uh, again this month are you ready for it you know that makes more impact for the customer to recall oh yes yeah I remember I remember I had a conversation with XYZ and uh, I remember that we uh, actually promised that we'll be using your products and services in near future okay no, no problem let's go ahead and schedule a demo maybe end of this week you know you schedule a demo and the sales head will be like cracking the deal most probably however starting the conversation from day one hey am I talking to Mr. Smith and uh, I can see that uh, you are the director of this organization are you interested in purchasing the product and our products and services uh, he will be directly hanging off the phone he said hey you know what I have already received thousands of calls from your organization and every time somebody new person calls me up he says he explains me about your organization I am really fed up I don't want to hear anything about your organization I don't want to hear anything about your products and services please do not call me please put me in DND now the thing is that we don't want that to, to happen right we don't want our to lose out our potential customers so it is very important that we should be like measuring each and every step which our customers and what was the last point of contact that we had and how did the conversation went through right now there are several types of activities that uh, you know we have to do so that our customers keeps on engaged our customers keeps on engaged depending on the different several different stages depending on the different stages of the funnel that we have to throw some information so first one is uh, the best one is retargeting campaigns so let's see if somebody uh, you know gives you a call and he understands about your products and services you know he had a conversation with the sales uh, team so it is very important that he should visit our website once you know we should be like pitching him hey you know what you should be visiting our website you should be understanding you should like our social media pages you should be following us on Instagram you should be following us on Facebook you know if you should be following us on LinkedIn if we have a page in LinkedIn or Twitter or other handles so after that once he follows us you know uh, we can also ask him the permission right uh, if we can go ahead and uh, mark, send some collaterals or marketing information or infographics um, to his email address on a regular basis and if he says yeah no problem go ahead you know if he says yes then it's very important that we keep on retargeting him now what will happen is whenever somebody visits your website there are cookies that has been captured you know on your server on your system like say let's say you visited XYZ company and uh, XYZ website 
and the cookies are being saved into the server so if he goes some other site let's say if he goes to some other uh, blogging site or some other news site or any other site he will see the ad your company's ad because whenever you're running those uh, ads his cookies are already there so google identifies that this person has already seen this website so that means he might be interested if he's opening up youtube then obviously he can see the uh, ads that you've been running in youtube you know that will actually give him a trigger a reminder that oh yes you know what i i need to purchase i i have to make a decision i need to talk to my seniors i need to get the budget approval and i need to make some decisions buying this product because this product is really cool right so retargeting is one of them second is as i already mentioned social media so what can we do in social media it is very important that you maintain your social media handles on a regular basis upload lots of videos inform uh, uh, about your customers uh, what are the services that you sell what are the new things that are the new updates that is coming up you know what are the new customer testimonials that is happening it is very important that they see your product at the same time in social media you have to be very careful because uh, there are certain algorithms if you are actually liking the page however you're not you know commenting or liking the particular video for a certain period of time then automatically uh, face according to facebook or its uh, algorithm they will remove you or silent you they will not remove you they will silent you and you stop seeing any kind of notifications from this particular social media pages so it is very important that on a timely basis you send them an email with those uh, links to uh, update your content in uh, youtube you ask your potential customers to subscribe to your channel you ask them to follow on facebook and like and share those information so the more engagement that we get from those potential customers the more chances are they will be always updated in what's happening with the product and services and what's happening with the organization so your chances of getting the visibility in front of a customer becomes much more higher so this uh, then the third comes like we can also run some drip campaigns we can run some drip campaigns like the first campaign that we are sending you know uh, we will be sending some information like uh, how for example if you have uh, a mobile app which is selling grocery items right and you can just create a an informative page right and tell them how mobile apps uh, buying grocery from mobile apps during this COVID times are much more safer compared to the person going outside and purchasing it from the market, right? So you can say that you just have to stay at home on the tip of your phone. You just have to, you know, download the app. You can just select whatever items that you need. You can pay it online. You don't have to go to the ATM and take out cash and buy local stuff. And the delivery person will be bringing you stuff fully sanitized, fully hygienic at your doorsteps and you don't have to step out of your house right comparatively if he goes out and if he comes in contact with a covid patient and maybe his immunity is much more higher he gets the uh, disease and then he brings it to his family and by any chance if somebody old person or somebody has a weaker immunity uh, are prone to that disease then there's a huge risk right so why to take risk when when you can just get it online moreover uh, we can run certain kind of drip campaigns. We can also tell them that what are the benefits of ordering it through your mobile app. Uh, you know why we are trusted because we are giving uh, 24 hours, within 24 hours we are giving this uh, home delivery free of cost. You don't have to waste your petrol, you don't have to waste your, your energy to go out, you don't have to uh, stand in the queue, right? So all these things that we need to send to the customers. Third is why our products are much more better compared to our competitors because if you talk about our competitors let's say they're delivering their products within 36 hours we are making sure that we're delivering this product within you know the next five or six hours right so why we are better so all this information you have to create a marketing plan for this through which uh, you know you know that what will be the mindset if a customer is actually looking for a particular video if a customer is actually seeing a particular infographic you know then what will be his next mindset what will be he uh, what will he would like to know what information he would like to know uh, the next information so you need to create a mindset come depending on the actions it is known as cta 
otherwise known as call to actions. What are the call to actions that he's been taking? Depending on his behavior, the customer's behavior, so that's more important. Depending on customer's behavior, we need to identify what are the products and services that we need to showcase on the next step. So that's all about the lead funnel strategy. This is just the first video I've been sharing in details. We'll be sharing some more information, some more insights, like how can we go step by step? Which are the tools, which are the softwares that you can purchase? For example, if you are unable to purchase a very high uh, budget uh, CRM tool, it is you can also manage that information in Excel, MS Excel, which comes free of cost, right? We can design some uh, layouts through which we can manage a smaller chunk of data and we can identify like how we can go ahead and retarget them and what type of uh, campaigns or what type of information that we need to show him in the to make sure that we get more potential customers. So uh, my friends, if we actually follow a strategy uh, when it comes to lead generation and when it comes to converting it and getting more customers, there are higher chances that you will be getting those potential customers and your business will grow. If we are not following any strategy, all the money, all the efforts, all the teams will be lost and you will be keep on uh, spending your money or wasting your money and you will be not getting that kind of desired results. So if you have any questions, you can just contact me in the number given below and I'll be more than happy to assist you further. Thank you and hope you have a great day.